Welcome back. So it looks like the motor needs to come off just by adjusting some of the screws back here so that we can get the tension off of those belts. So just need to grab a wrench, get back in here. Let's see how tight these are. Oh no. Not really a good place to get a socket on. Yeah, it would help though if I went the right direction with this. That should be the right width there. Let's see. That seems to move relatively well. Can't really see what's going on under here. Let's try this square, see if it's loose enough. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that's, that's good. So, what I understand of how these work, loosening that up should allow this to rotate a little bit, yeah. So, what I do, let's get in here on this one. Back this nut off. This one doesn't seem to want to budge. Get it tightened back up on there. <sighs> there we go. So now what I can do is once that's backed off a decent amount, I can <sighs> tighten this and that should push the motor. Yeah, this should push the motor upwards a little ways, and that should pull tension off of the belts. Okay, there we go. So we've got some tension off the belts, so now we should be able to... Oh, still pretty tight on there. I don't know what that is, but it's not going to be really useful. So I guess we can just, yeah, I can just get those belts off just by moving these over one at a time. motor doesn't seem to be in too bad a condition. I still want to get it off and check the bearings on it, but uh, other than removing some rust from that pulley, it should be good. And now for the fun part, getting this pulled off. I'm not sure if I have enough uh, leverage with that. I don't want to put any pressure on the I don't want to put any pressure on the gearing more than it already has. Hmm. Not sure I see any way of not sure I see any way of actually putting any 
and then sort of torque on this more. Uh, with just a good shock. Yeah, yeah, that's coming off. Yeah, because this is just held on with that spring washer and that gave it some tension, but not so much that it wasn't going to come loose. Let's see if the belt's out of the way. Oh, not sure if I'm going to be able to pull this off from here, though. Huh. What to do? Grab a hammer here, see if we can get things to budge around. Right it's uh, moving a little bit, not a whole lot. This would be a nice time to have actually a pulley extractor. All right, so I went out and just bought some of the cheapest tools money can buy. Just wanted to get this over with. Put a nice, uh, get a simple set of these pulley tools. It seems like this should come off without too much of an issue. Still not exactly easy, but you know. Yeah, that's really, really on there. I definitely wouldn't be able to get this off without pulley extraction set. Whew. It looks like they painted on this before they took it off last time, or they put it on last time. There's almost certainly paint on the shaft underneath this. Could explain why it was broken in the first place. Yeah, I checked this, I cleaned this all off to make sure there weren't any like set screws in here holding everything in place before I just started yanking on it, but unfortunately I couldn't find anything. Oh, come on. Yeah. It's the thing with these cheap sets, they seem to be uh <laughs> Not designed to hold up really well. You can already see where just this small job is eating into the threads. But I mean, for what is it like six bucks a piece or something? It's not. Uh, Terrible deal for a one time use tool. Mm. Ooh. Might need to reconfigure it to get it off the last little bit. Yeah, one second. Now, I 
after looking, I was wondering why there was this collar here. And I took a break to look at the parts diagram to try and figure out what it was. Oh, it's almost off here. And it turns out that uh, one of the extra pieces I had was this. And by extra, I mean, uh, if you see this, this is supposed to be a hand wheel mounted here so that you can operate, or so you can move the, uh, manually move the uh, headstock. And this piece was supposed to previously be, you know, inside there. Looks like at some point, uh, I'm guessing somebody tried to get this off and broke it off. But uh, who knows? And that also, you know, explained to me why there was all these holes drilled in this. Is from the factory they had drilled all those holes to try and balance the wheel out so that when this is spinning it doesn't uh, just start wobbling. Now... I'm not all, at all ashamed about this, but I ended up having to just take a grinder to this to give me some purchase on the spots there so I could actually get this off. But there we go. There's one piece off the shaft. Now, hopefully this pulley doesn't uh, have nearly as much of an issue with it. This pulley seemed like it was moving a bit more than that other piece was, so I don't think yeah, I don't think that'd be too hard to get off. But like I said, there is there is definitely paint under here. Maybe brushing off a bit of this paint will let me just slide it right off since it seems like it's not too tight, but I don't want to have this larger section here causing any more interference than I need. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Seems whoever did the uh, repaint job on this was pretty sloppy. A lot of the paint's been flaking off in several spots and uh, comes off relatively easily most everywhere. And in some places it's definitely painted somewhere where there wasn't supposed to be paint originally. Seems like they just went at it with a spray can and just evenly coated the entire machine. <clears throat> and this brush is getting a bit worn out. That's what happens when you buy cheap stuff, right? Of course, so far I haven't needed to really buy any, much of anything expensive because if I'm only using it once, why would I spend five times as much? <clears throat> yeah, it's, a it's still a little bit tight there. I don't know if I'm going to have to use a puller on this as well. <clears throat> I'm actually not certain if I have one a puller that's large enough. Yeah, this is it's a good foot in diameter and I think the largest set I have is uh eight inch. So it's the the largest one they have at Harbor Freight. <sighs> well just do a bit more brushing on this. Make sure that I've for certain gotten all of the spots off that would normally be making this such a tight fit. There's some rust here and uh, it was underneath the paint, meaning whoever actually did the paint job on this originally just didn't even clean out any of the rust off or anything. They just wanted to make it look pretty, I guess. Mm. The uh, 
general maintenance idea of screw the next guy because hopefully it's not you. Yeah, that's about as clean as I can get that. So if this isn't going to come off easily, then yeah, and then I'm going to have to going to have to get some get a, the puller in here. If I don't have one that fits, then I'm definitely going to have to wait until I can borrow a larger one. My work has plenty of various size pullers that are more for large equipment. I think they would have one that's the right size for this. <sighs> All right, far from ideal, but the largest ones that came with set seemed just big enough. And since this seems like it shouldn't, it was only just a little bit too much pressure to pull off by hand, I don't think this will be too much of a problem. Yeah, this is coming off smoothly, so I don't think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna be a problem there. I would be worried if I had to put a lot of extra pressure just because I'm putting on such a small point on the pulley there. But these seem like they're, yeah, that's gonna come off just fine. I wonder if this is, yeah, that's loose enough there. So, just slide that off. And there we go, there's the large pulley removed. Ooh. Bit grimy on the inside, but nothing too bad. Yeah, so it looks like I just got these two bolts here and the socket head cap screw on the bottom there to get off. We'll have that motor cover. Let's see what size we got there. I don't. Uh, I don't know if I've got the right size wrench for that. And looks like is that five eighths. No, it's a size smaller than that. Yeah, my. This is basically the limit of my wrenches, so yeah, there we go, 9 sixteenths. I generally just have the minimum amount of tooling required to work on a car for general maintenance, so up until now I haven't really had a lot of tools. Oh, that was easy. Somewhere where they're not going to get lost. And then for the socket screw here, I'll just see if this trusty multi tool has the right one. Yeah. Hmm. It seems like it is supported at the top. So this hopefully shouldn't just fall as soon as I get this loose. Alright, there we go. Yeah, it's it was sitting on shoulder up here, so uh, let's stick that bolt back in for just right now. And that's the other side of the belt cover pulled off. <sighs> Alright, so Next we have to get into here, and this, I've been looking into the manual, are the two main drive shafts. So these are the ones that are actually going to control some of our main speeds on this. And looking at the uh, gearing that I have in here that I need to inspect a little bit closer, and some of it does need to be replaced, I will need to get both of these two shafts pulled out. I'm not certain though if I have tool it'll be good for getting this one out so I need to pull a set screw and a pin out of here before I can turn this but I'm not certain if I'm gonna 
have something to actually work well with that. I do have some things that are about the right size, but, uh, uh, you know, get some of my tools and start looking at it. All right, so it's not exactly the right tool, but I had this laying around and I just ground that to a flat edge, got it just the right size. And there we go, we've got motion. Yeah, I already pulled the set screw out, so. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it's still a bit hot from grinding, but yeah, that's it's gonna come right out. Oh. I wonder actually if now that it's loose, if my large standard flat edge can turn it. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Oh. I actually don't know how much oil is in this thing. I don't, there's not a whole lot, but uh, I don't think there's enough that it's gonna just come pouring out when I do this, but well, we'll see now, won't we? Yeah, there's definitely not that much oil in there. Yeah, the fill level is supposed to be somewhere around here. All right. And this one, I've already gotten the set screws off of this. Uh, I don't think this is threaded. I think it's just... Here. I think this is just slid onto a shoulder. It's spinning, it should help me get that clear. Uh, there we go. Come on. I don't want to come off. A little bit from both sides. There we go. And that's both of those, so... Oh yeah, I was like... Well, it should come out, but then I realized that I think there's still some of the control arms inside that might be holding on to some of these pieces. So I think that means it's time to pop this open and show you the inside. Hmm. I don't know if the lighting I have in here is actually good enough for you to see inside, but hopefully should be able to get a good look at this. Yeah, there I know there's some dirt and stuff on the top, but considering I'm going to disassemble and clean out the entire inside. I'm not too worried about getting some stuff put in, into there. Oh. I actually uh, replaced a couple of these bolts first thing when I got it and looked into it because some of it was, some of them were pretty rusty. All right. Yeah, you don't, uh, it's not too bad actually. Let's uh, get a little bit closer here for you. Yeah. So a lot of this gearing is actually in really nice condition. Generally it looks all good. There is some problems though, of course. If you look in, let's see which, uh, kind of lost my leverage points that I normally use. To move stuff around here. Let's see. Uh, there we go. So there's a small pinion back here. I might actually need to lower this down a little bit so you can see up into the back. 
So you have a small pinion back here and it is pretty badly worn. It has definitely had some extra damage to it. And there's a good reason why. If I move this over so that you can get that pinion in this gear in the center here. I'm gonna turn this and right there. If you can see that, there's a tooth missing there, a tooth missing there, and two teeth missing here. So at some point I'm guessing somebody had been using this incorrectly. Probably had it stuck over here all the way, putting a lot of pressure on it. And then of course, whenever that skips, you see that it uh, hits that a little bit. And so that's not gonna be good for the uh, life of that. Yeah, so I'm a, I also wonder if somebody accidentally uh, had this machine in gear while they were moving things and just happened to get a bunch of damage there. But yeah, so this this piece right here, this double bearing set is actually all one assembly, I think, and this entire thing might actually be an entire assembly by itself as well. This one back here is it's an individual gear, though, so I should be able to get this one replaced relatively easy. This is going to need to get repaired. I don't really have the means of building a new replacement. I would have to have a full thing cast and yeah, there's a there's a lot of effort that would go into that, but now we've got this open. I'm wondering if I should be able to get this. I wonder how this is supposed to come off there. Yeah, I've got the headstock assembly here. I'm looking at this shaft here. And that's gonna go through and hold this all together. I guess it looks like there's a single castle nut on the back there. So that should be just back up in here. I'm not sure how easy that's gonna be to get to. If I move this camera over, yeah, you can see it there. Then this other one down here, we've got a set screw holding the back plate on the back there, but other than that, there's not really a whole lot other than a couple mid castle nuts. And here's what I was talking about. This whole piece here, yeah, all four of these gears are a single assembly. So if I, it's like I can't really easily replace that whole assembly, but I might be able to do some milling work and try and fix the broken teeth that are on there and get them... Uh, just those single ones repaired and then take that back gearing up here and replace just that one so that it's not going to cause any additional wear on the repaired gears. But yeah, that's what we're looking at. Uh, I've got one castle nut down in here and then that other castle nut in the very back there. I'm not certain which one would be easier to remove first and I'd have to see if I even have a good wrench for getting those off since they've got a they've got a washer on here that puts a lot of pressure and makes it really difficult to pull those off because you know they don't want them spinning off with uh, while the machine's running of course all right but uh, there you can kind of see into it and like if I'm going to manipulate some of these inside bits here, you can see we've got the rest of this working well. And really like a lot of this functions great. It's just that having some of those uh, broken bits are going to be a bit of a pain to repair. So while the, this is disabled, essentially, or while that's broken, I'm going to have to essentially never use my fourth lever position on the C. And if I come out here, 
bring you down onto the speed chart, you can see that there are two spindle speeds that are running on that. We've got the 30 RPM and the 182 RPM. So until I get that repaired, I can still use the lathe, but I wouldn't be able to use either of those two speeds. I don't really have any need for the lathe at the moment, so I'm, since I'm just doing a full restoration, I'm probably not going to use it at all until I've got those repaired on it anyway. But, yeah. <sighs> That's probably enough for right now. I'm going to start working next on getting all of the all of this gearing out of the inside of the out of the inside of the headstock here and working one shaft at a time to remove everything but uh thanks for watching